Hello and welcome to Screwit 1.2. In this tutorial we're going to show you what this new update is all about and how much, again, your mobile photography is going to benefit from its editing capabilities. We're going to start off by launching the app. Not much changed here, besides the background, it's a new pattern. We wanted this update to feel heavier right from the start. Down at the bottom we still got the Instagram or the info button. You can take an image or you can choose one from your camera roll, which is leading us to our first big new feature. For this update we've completely customized the image picker, which is making it maybe the most advanced image picker out there yet. Let me show you why. You are now the pain that all these automatically generated albums are bringing to your editing workflow because you never end up using recently deleted camera roll or recently edited in your picture editing workflow. We've fixed that by adding a sort button at the bottom. By tapping it, it reveals a new set of icons and by tapping the eye icon, I basically make them invisible in my main view. So I don't need these here. By tapping and holding on another album, I can rearrange them. I like screw it to be at the bottom. I like my Instagram shots be there too. And maybe mirrors should be somewhere close. So you can tap and hold anywhere until it pops up and then simply rearrange it. Hit confirm. And now you can see we got a beautiful new structure. These changes are permanent, which does mean they won't change when you close screw it. They will only change if you decide to change them or if you delete screw it. Another big feature in our image picker is the grid view. You can now decide if you want to have three thumbnails, four, one, two, or back to three. It really depends on your viewing pleasure. You can sort the images. This one, for example, is my most recent one in the iOS gallery. If I tap it again, this one is my latest one, my last one. So it really solves the issue of having to scroll through your whole gallery to find all the images. Tap it again to sort it by size. This one is the biggest. Tap it again, this one is the smallest, maybe you're searching for the screenshot that you just need to crop, or tap it again to go back to normal. These changes are permanent and they will only change if you change them or if you're gonna delete, screw it. You may have noticed that you have to scroll up, not like in iOS down. We want all the info to be at your thumb, this is why we've changed the buttons to the bottom, this is part of our one-handed UI, and you know that Fishing with a bigger device, I got like average size hands. If you want to have this thumbnail up here, you really have to make a move, especially with the iPhone 6 Plus. Another big issue that we've encountered with this update you all may be familiar with is that you simply can't decide which image you should edit by just reviewing the thumbnail, especially when your candidates are so close to each other like here on top. But we fixed that. By tapping the thumbnail, it first gets revealed a full displayed image in our brand new preview function. And with the swipe gesture, you can navigate throughout the whole gallery, so to the image left or right to the current displayed image. It's super beautiful. If that's not enough, you can tap the arrow, which is eliminating the animation in between, so it's even more easy to find out deal breakers or deal makers, small changes in between your shots, just to make the decision easier for you and to find out which image you want to have. In case this shouldn't be enough, Tap the image and reveal our all new EXIF reader. You have now access to the shutter speed, aperture, ISO, which is especially important when you're shooting all out with the iPhone. Now let's jump into editing. We're going for this one here because this is super good to start with. Before jumping into the editing process, I'd like to introduce to you the new interface. So we move the buttons from the top to the button. Now you can navigate the app as a part of the one hand navigation from the button. You can import, export, cancel or confirm. So if I'm going to a filter, you can now hit the bottom at the bottom, not at the top. Again, you don't have to fish anymore. This is super convenient. At first, these buttons may appear small, but be sure that we've exported several prototypes to find out which would be the best small size icon at the bottom. And there are several ways to navigate through Screwit in general. So now if I navigate, I can simply tap it. If you struggle to hit it at first before your muscle memory kicks in, you can tap the bottom of your phone, swipe up, so you're going to hit the bottom too. And now there's a third way, so let me show you. If I'm going to just correct it a little bit, I can use the edge swipe gesture to hit confirm or cancel, for example, or to import or to export. This is a super cool new way to navigate through Screwit, and I end up using this one more than the buttons at the bottom. Let's continue editing it. We've done the perspective correction. Now let's go for some simple rotation. And due to the perspective correction, this scar here got a little bit smaller. I'm simply going to jump into the ratio tool and stretch the image out a bit. So this is it. While explaining, while just showing you some kind of pieces, we've already completely corrected this image in a super good way. 
I figured out that the best way to show you how to edit an image is by simply importing one and getting going. So we're going for this one here because I can show you a variety of filters. First thing I do is I rotate it by 90 degrees, one tap, one icon. And next thing you see is it's very dark and very light. So it's important to choose the right grid. And by multiple taps on the grid icon, I can toggle through the different grid states. We're going for the red one here. This has been shot with a GoPro. So we got a crazy barrel distortion going. That's not a problem because we got dedicated algorithms for smartphones, wide angle lenses, fisheye lenses, or the GoPro. So let's go for the GoPro, crank it up to 20 before and after. And we've just corrected the lens distortion from a GoPro camera image. Now for some vertical lines correction, this actually, you can add it how you like to. So I can go to, to 18. If I don't like it, I simply double tap the dial and this is going to reset or I can go back here, zoom in into the area. And now by tapping the dial sides, I can go into high precision editing mode. This is super convenient and whatever you want to, you can do it with screw it. So I'm going to confirm it. If you might have missed something or you'd like this on top of here, be a bit more squeezed to the top, a bit less information, you can go into any kind of filter at any time and re-edit it because we're using a non-destructive workflow. So this is it. Let's go for some rotation. Yes, that's nice. And as a last filter, I suggest using the vignette correction tool. Pay attention to the corners here. This correction tool is lightening up the corners. This is a common problem when you're, for example, um, shooting images with a wide open aperture. So that's it. This is our editing process so far. And now I'm going to show you some little more cool um, settings that you use that you can use and screw it. So by double tapping at the main screen, you can reveal the grid here. You can zoom in and analyze the image and then decide if you want to go for further editing or you may have noticed that this is the limit. So I'm at 20 and I can't go any further. I'm going to confirm it here. I This is it. But what you can do now is you can use our brand new icon, which is the bank icon. What this one is doing is it is merging the current state into a new solid layer. It's like saving and reporting the image. And if I do so, I can go back to the filter. You can see I got a fresh new filter and I can just continue editing how it would have been a new imported image, which is super cool. Let's go for some de-squeezing again into the ratio filter. Hit confirm and we've just um, did a second edit. You can now save it if you'd like to, but if you don't like what you've done, no problem. You can now go to um, reset and you can go for full reset, which is setting the image back to 100% to normal, how you've imported it, or you can reset to bank, which is resetting the image to the state where you have banked the image so you can um, start over and try different settings out. Now, when you finish your edit, you can export it, you can open it in a different app, you can replace it with the original one in your IIS gallery. This is a new feature. Open it in mirror, which is something I'm going to explain to you in a minute and save it to your camera roll or send it to Instagram. But first, let's edit another image. With this image, I like to show you the difference between auto crop on, auto crop off and the high precision crop tool. We're going to start off again by importing this image. And I do highly recommend you deciding before editing the image if you want to go with auto crop on, auto crop off. Right now, auto crop is switched on. And when I edit an image, you can see that screw it is handling all the cropping. If you do not want to have that, you can switch it off by using this button here. Now auto cropping is off. And when I get back to my vertical lines correction filter, you can see that I'm not losing any information anymore and I'm in full control. So that's it. Confirm. Looking quite good. Some rotation left. There we go. And yeah, we've just corrected an image completely without auto cropping. And now let's jump into our high precision crop tool. The reason why we've called this high precision crop tool is because it's working different than other conventional crop tools. Let me show you why. We're going to start off by deciding which aspect ratio we want to have. By double tapping it, you're going to change it. And now you can resize the frame by tapping one of the active corners, but you actually can't move it. So you don't get mixed up and you're not resizing it when you want to reframe it or the other way around. What you can in 1.2 now is you can reframe it by tapping just the middle or like the conventional screw it way using two fingers. This way you're always going to see what you're cropping. And this one is the most and best way I could find out just how a crop tool could work. And another big benefit is, let me show you, if I'm now, for example, 
going for this heading here, you can see that this indicator went red. It does mean that there's no image information in this particular area. But now I can zoom in, pan around with one finger, and with two fingers, I can now reposition it. This is what this is making for me, this crop tool, the very best crop tool out there. All right, now it's time for the fun stuff. It's finally time to show you what Mirror is all about and how to use and navigate through Mirror. We're gonna go for this image because again, we got super much variety in this image. And the reason why we did an app in an app, so you can say appception is that some of these settings in Screwit are not in Mirror, like for example, our lens correction tool. And this environment of having an app in an app is super good when you have to um, edit between apps. So you don't have to send it anywhere else and my big plan and ambition is to make more of these kind of apps. So now let's go just for a set lens correction, which is always important. I could go for a simple rotation here. And as I'm done, I can simply swipe and open it in mirror. And this one is actually launching a whole new app inside of Screwit. You can say that this is a different app. This is not Screwit, pay attention, this really isn't. It looks familiar, but it is not. What you can do is Screwit related adjustments, like for example, vertical correction, tap and hold for the before and after. But now here comes a really difference. Now, if you go for the ratio tool, which is this one here, you can like drag, drag it down here at the top. You see, or drag it to the other side. You can completely reposition it. More of that soon. But the key feature is actually mirroring one side. So one, two, boom. Have you noticed what I've done? I've just been playing around with mirror and it immediately went out into this image, but I have not done much. What I can do now is like and screw it. I can tap this icon in the middle. This is the bank icon like it doesn't screw it, like saving the current state into a new solid layer. Tap the bottom, flip the bottom, and then again, go for some vertical correction. And this is the only tool that is allowing you, let me reset, fully reset. This is the only tool that is actually allowing you this kind of vertical perspective correction. And this is what it's making so important because when you usually would mirror it, it would end up like that. But when I now go for a vertical correction filter, you can see how these lines in the middle get punched together. So you can really get the most precise mirror image out there. Now go back into your ratio filter, simply tap the top and you can drag the corner down or you can also drag the bottom down and completely reorganize your composition. And it's just super fun playing around with it. Also, we do have our um, different grids that we do have in uh, Screw It too. So feel free to toggle through these and play around with it and explore this app. I'm gonna show you another good example of how amazing Mirror is. This is going to be our next shot for Mirror. Again, like last time, we're going through Screw It. This is a super famous spot in Berlin, super famous Instagram spot. Let's just do some quick adjustments. This should be just it and now send it to open it in mirror here we go and now i won't be that fast like last time i'm going to explain to you like the key function so what you do is you can mirror either went the left side or the right side you see like this is original i've mirrored the left side to the right or i've mirrored the right side like this one here to the left and now you can actually reposition it by swiping but it's not really important for this image but you could zoom in and by tapping go even more precise with your adjustments. So this is what I wanted to have. And now like and screw it, I'm going to merge the layer and I'm now going for the vertical flip. Here we go. But this is actually not the side that I would like to go. I'm gonna flip it the other way. Yes, this is where we want it to be. I'm gonna exaggerate here because now I want to show you the ratio filter and the ratio filter is like crazy powerful. Depending on which side you're choosing and which direction you're dragging, for example, I want to drag, to stretch the top side down. So I'm going to the top and I'm stretching it inside my composition. So with some simple swipes, we've created this out of this here. It's really that easy. If I want to stretch it the other way, like not to the inside, but to the outside, I'm just going to use the downside. And now you can see how the composition is stretching outside of the screen, really benefiting from screw its auto cropping here. Here we go, some simple swipes and we've just created this image. And I really hope that you like this tutorial and that you're gonna um, do super high precise photo manipulations yourself with Mirror because this one is meant to do um, photorealistic compositions. If you decide to um, go back to a setting or you don't wanna have a setting, just tap and hold on the icon that you've just used. Like for instance, this here, the ratio tool, tap and hold, and then you've completely reset it 
are for example the mirroring tap and hold you've completely reset it and you can start over and start over and start over um, once you've done let me just quickly edit it again here yeah. let's go for the filter you can now click on ready export you can send it back to screw it you can um, save it to your camera roll send it to Instagram replace it open in the same basic adjustments just that you can send it back to screw it because here's a crop tool missing and again you can benefit from the higher precision crop tool that we got and screw it and just go for your perfect composition as you wish let's do it a square here we go this is what we've just done within a couple of minutes and while we've been just chitty chatting mirror is going to be available as an inner purchase inside of screw it so this is how you're going to access it oops open a mirror and then um, simply you can you know by tapping this little icon at the bottom where it's gonna be you can try it out as you wish but this button this export button you're gonna to have to purchase for 199 less than a cheesy this tutorial is getting a bit overboard um one last thing i'm going to show you is um a quick workaround how to work around this auto cropping how to not limit yourself on what your original image um, ratio is and besides that thanks for watching and have an awesome day goodbye for usability purposes, Mirror is working with the same auto cropping screw it is, and you can't resize the canvas, but there's a really nice workaround for that. Let me show you. First thing you want to do is turn off the auto cropping and screw it, and then jump into your rotation filter. Let's go to minus 15 here, confirm, and now tap the bank icon. And as you can see, there's a new solid white around your image. The only thing left you have to do is go back to your rotation filter, now go to plus 15, to make the image straight again and now tap the bank icon again now we have a straight image inside of a white canvas and now simply import it to mirror and mirror is now recognizing this new white canvas as your new image and you have way more space to play around with so let's just briefly edit this one here this one is looking good some perspective correction just to make it even here we go ratio filter and boom in just some simple steps with some simple swipes we've created this out of this and now as always send it to screw it crop it send it anywhere and what i found out with this little workaround is by enlarging the canvas and stretching it you actually enlarging the image resolution so the information that you may have lost during the editing process and screw it is now restored or even bigger than before that's a super cool fact to know have fun exploring mirror and again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.